Hello everyone. A very very good morning to all of you. Am I live? Am I visible? Am I audible? Give me a minute to confirm if I'm clearly visible or audible. I will start the session. Give me a minute to confirm it. Okay. So I hope it's working. Good. So I welcome you all for today's session. A very very good morning to all of you. I am Dr. Priyanka Sachdev here. And today I am here to take a very very important topic. Just a second. Uh, from the pathology, from the general pathology, a topic from hemodynamics. The most important topic from hemodynamics, the most awaited topic from hemodynamics is edema. So many students demanded me uh, to teach this topic in a simplified manner. The pathogenesis of edema is super duper important in your exams, right? Am I right? So, uh, if you're a second prof MBBS student, this question is going to come in your long question. So, you have to write at least four to five pages on the topic edema, the pathogenesis of edema, the causes of edema, the types of edema. So, this topic is going to be very important. And if you have already passed your second prof and preparing for some competitive exam, you can't imagine how many questions can be asked from the various types of edema, the transudate, the exudate, you know, either the direct questions or indirect questions in the form of the clues. So edema is something you can't miss at whatever stage you are studying right now. Either you are preparing for your university exam or you are preparing, preparing for any of your competitive exam. You can't miss, you can't afford missing this topic. So without wasting any further time, let me start edema. So let me first define edema. Edema hota kya hai? What is edema? Do you know what is edema? In simplified language, if I say what is edema, so edema is, you know, it is like in simplified language in Hindi, the patient comes to you and they will be say, the doctor mujhe sujan ho gai hai. Hindi mein usse kehte hai sujan, the edema, the word edema. The patient say ki mujhe sujan ho gai hai, swelling ho gai hai. In simplified language, it is known as swelling. It can occur at any part of the body from head to toe. That is the edema. Now, why it occurs? How you will define it? So, as I have told you, it can occur in any part of the body. See, this is the organ. This is the organ. This is any, any, any organ. We know all organs. We know that all organs are made up of cells. So, here inside the organs, you can see the cells. These are the cells. The organ is made up of cells. You can see this is the blood vessel of this organ. This is the blood vessel of this organ. All organs receive blood via blood vessel. Whenever the fluid comes out of the blood vessel and get accumulated in the interstitial space. I am using the word interstitial space. Interstitial space. The space between adjacent cells. Jo pass pass ke cells hai, unke beach ke space mein yadi fluid ikhatta ho jai. So because of which the organ will swell. And this is known as edema. So can you define the edema for me now? This is the definition of edema. So edema is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space. So give me a thumbs up. Amar, Padmavati, Swanand, Osama, give me a thumbs up. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Lily, have you got it? Everyone give me a thumbs up. So what is edema? Edema is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid in which space? Learn the name of the space, it's interstitial space. So this is edema. You all got the definition of the edema. Learn this diagram, you will understand how the fluid get accumulated in the space between the cells. That is interstitial space and this is known as edema, right? Now, related to edema, there is one more term which is known as effusion. The pathogenesis of both edema and effusion is same. So what is effusion? Effusion is also, you know, the definition is same. It is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid fluid but not in interstitial space so instead of interstitial space we have body cavities here so compare the both definition only one word is changing here the fluid is accumulated in interstitial space it's known as edema if the fluid is accumulated in body cavities it's known as effusion what do you mean by body cavities in human body we are having few cavities for example surrounding the lungs we have pleural cavity say yes or no of course we have pleural cavity Surrounding the heart, we have pericardial cavity. Every human being have it. So when the fluid is collected in these cavities, so it is not edema, excessive fluid. Imagine excessive fluid accumulated here in the pleural cavity. Can you see here? So what you will call it? It is not edema of the pleural cavity. You will say it is effusion. It is known as pleural effusion. Imagine if excessive fluid, you can see here, excessive fluid accumulated in the pericardial cavity. It is known as pericardial effusion. So that is the effusion. So pathogenesis of both of them is same. So I taught you the two definitions. What is edema 
and what is effusion pathogenesis i will teach now both of them have you got the definition give me a thumbs up it is abnormal and excessive accumulation of fluid accumulation of fluid in the interstitial space here accumulation of the fluid in body cavities so this also swells this also swells and the swelling is known as either edema or effusion you got it yogita sheik usama priyanshi padmavati amar any doubt anyone having any doubt if you don't have any doubt i would like to proceed so we have learned the definition of edema we have learned the definition of effusion now it's time to understand the pathogenesis which is very difficult but pathogenesis will be simplified if you know the normal fluid exchange so if you know what is normal now so understanding abnormal is very very easy you got my point so pehle normal kya hota hai wo samajh mein aana chahiye can you see this diagram this is a simplified diagram i drawn for you here you can see this is artery here you can see this is vein connecting artery carry pure blood vein carry impure blood and connecting the two are the capillaries we can see the capillaries connecting the two so have you ever thought ki how pure blood get converted to impure when it passes through capillary when the blood was in artery it was pure but when it passes through capillary and reaches the vein it become impure so what is happening inside the capillary inside the capillary the exchange is taking place by pure i mean oxygenated blood by impure i mean deoxygenated blood that you may be knowing right so let me draw so can you see okay so in the center there is a capillary so you all can see a capillary in the center connecting artery and vein so basically all capillaries have one end towards the artery and one end towards the vein so i am interested in capillary i am interested in capillary so can you see this is a capillary this is not artery no this is not vein no this is a capillary in one end of the capillary there is arterial end and the other end of the capillary is vein end so arterial end of the capillary and vein end of the capillary but this is a capillary so here the pure blood is entering and here the impure blood is coming out am i right am i right yogita padmavati usama am i right priyanshi am i right so in a capillary when the blood enters it enters through arterial end and it is pure it is oxygenated and when it passes through the capillary and it comes out out of the other side the other side is known as vein end and when the blood comes out of the other end it become impure so exchange is taking place at this level you got my point now see again i guess everyone can see this diagram again this is a diagram of a capillary again this is a diagram of a capillary here you can see a beautiful diagram of a capillary right so this is the arterial end of the capillary so of course it is the pure blood and this is the venous end of the capillary of course it is impure blood right you can see it is a capillary right now all capillaries supply blood to some organ so see these are the cells of organ this is a organ made up of cells so i have drawn the organ here it is made up of cells the cells of the organ now when the pure blood is entering here listen the pure blood is entering here why all organs require blood my question to you all organs require blood why why are all organs required but osama why all organs require blood sabko blood ki zarurat kyun hoti hai none of the organ in our human body have which do, do not require blood the organs require blood for one thing oxygen all cells require oxygen and oxygen is coming from the blood only so whenever blood is passing through the arterial end now at the arterial end the fluid comes out the fluid comes out it happens in me you everyone the fluid comes out do the necessary exchange here yahan pe pura exchange ho jayega it will go here see i am drawing the fluid the fluid is going in the interstitial space doing the exchange in the exchange two things are happening number one the oxygen present in the fluid given to the cell the carbon dioxide present in the cell taken by the fluid so exchange taking place after all the exchange the fluid again come back and enters in the capillary so at arterial end fluid is go fluid goes out and at the venous end of the capillary the fluid again come in so in the end the organ is dry there is no fluid after this the organ is dry the organ is dry in the end whatever coming out the same goes in yahan pe jitna bahar aa raha hai hindi mein kahu to utna hi wapas andar ja raha hai isliye at the end the organ is dry usme puri dryness hoti hai kuch bhi after the exchange there is nothing remaining in the organ so we don't have edema so it is happening in you me we don't think about it but it is currently now at this instant also it is taking in place inside all of us inside each and every organ hamare har organ har cell mein ye ho raha hai abhi bhi har moment pe ye hota rehta hai but we don't have 
awareness about it you know we don't think about it but it is happening automatically so give me a thumbs up so this is the exchange taking place right so how the fluid knows ki ye arterial hand hai chalo bahar chalte hain एक्सचेंज करते हैं और ये वीनस एंड है चलो वापस अंदर चलते हैं नो फ्लूड डोंट थिंक्स एंड डू सो एक्चुअली इट इज द प्रेशर प्रेशर चेंजेस बिकॉज ऑफ विच द फ्लूड इज कमिंग आउट एंड फ्लूड इज गोइंग इन सो लेट मी टॉक अबाउट सम प्रेशर्स लेट मी टॉक अबाउट सम प्रेशर्स देर आर टू टाइप ऑफ प्रेशर्स एक्टिंग इन अ कैपलरी राइट नो द फर्स्ट प्रेशर इज हाइड्रोस्टेटिक नाम में ये हाइड्रो हाइड्रो का मतलब होता है वॉटर वॉटर सो ब्लड इज मेड अप ऑफ वॉटर यू नो ब्लड हैव टू थिंग्स नंबर वन सेल्स नंबर टू वॉटर द वॉटर इज द प्लाज्मा तो वाटर की वजह से जो प्रेशर है ना द प्रेशर ड्यू टू वाटर दैट प्रेशर इज नोन एज हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर एंड इट इज ऑलवेज आउटवर्ड इट इज अ रूल दैट हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर इज ऑलवेज आउटवर्ड सो लेट मी ड्रॉ कैपलरी इन साइड विच लेट मी ड्रॉ द हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर सी द एरो इट इज ऑलवेज आउटवर्ड हाइड्रोस्टेटिक प्रेशर इट इज ड्यू टू वाटर और वाटर हमेशा बाहर धकेलता है वाटर ऑलवेज पुशिज द फ्लूड आउट That's why hydrostatic pressure is always outward. It is the rule. Number one pressure. Number two pressure. The, our blood have protein also. Can you see? I'm drawing the protein here. The blue dots are the protein. This is protein. So protein tends to tends to pull water. Protein में tendency होती है कि बाहर के water को अपनी तरफ खींचो to pull water, right? So this pressure due to protein is known as oncotic pressure. Oncotic pressure. The word onco, oncotic pressure or osmotic pressure. एक ही बात है. Oncotic or osmotic pressure, whatever. So it is the pressure due to protein, not due to water, and it has the tendency to pull the fluid inside. So it is always inward. See the arrows. See the arrows. The hydrostatic pressure is outward, and the oncotic pressure, osmotic pressure is inward. Hydrostatic is due to water, and osmotic oncotic is due to protein. Have you got it? Do you have any confusion in that? If you have even a slightest condition confusion, please ask me. एनीवन उसामा उसामा शेख योगिता पद्मावती मुझे सब लोग थम सब दो जितने ऑडियंस उतनी थम सब यू गॉट दिस पॉइंट द टू टाइप्स ऑफ द प्रेशर द हाइड्रोस्टैटिक एंड द ऑंकोटिक हाइड्रोस्टैटिक मतलब पानी की वजह से इट इज ऑलवेज आउटवर्ड एंड ऑंकोटिक ऑस्मोटिक इज ड्यू टू प्रोटीन इट इज ऑलवेज इन वर्ड ठीक है इतना समझ में आया तो टेल मी द वैल्यूज टेल मी द वैल्यूज टू टाइप ऑफ प्रेशर आर प्रेजेंट इन अ कैपलरी कैन यू हेल्प मी विद द वैल्यूज ओके so again let me draw the capillary to help you the values so whenever it is a rule you draw a capillary now i have drawn a capillary this is the capillary so always write this is arterial end this is venous end because i will write different values at arterial end of the pressures and different values at the venous end so let me tell you the values tell me the value of hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure at arterial end tell me the values of hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure at the venous end kaun batayega the four values you will say ma'am common sense says that protein is always same whatever blood is entering here so whatever protein is entering here so protein 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 same protein is going out here so protein mein to koi change nahi ho raha hai nothing is changing in protein so oncotic pressure should always be same so yes oncotic pressure here also it is 25 mm here also it is 25 mm so oncotic pressure is always 25 mm at both ends at both ends wo 25 hi hota hai क्योंकि कॉमन सेंस ना प्रोटीन में तो कोई चेंज नहीं हो रहा है लेकिन लेट्स टॉक अबाउट हाइड्रोस्टैटिक प्रेशर सो वॉट एवर वॉटर ये तो प्रोटीन था जितना एंटर हुआ उतना ही चलता गया चलता गया चलता गया द सेम प्रोटीन इज गोइंग एट द आर्टीरियल एंड एंड सेम इज गोइंग एट द बीनस एंड नो चेंज दैट्स वाई प्रेशर इज सेम इट्स ऑलवेज ट्वेंटी फाइव एट द आर्टीरियल ट्वेंटी फाइव एट द बीनस थ्रू आउट द कैपलरी इट्स ट्वेंटी फाइव बट वेन एवर वॉटर वॉट एवर वॉटर एंटरिंग हियर इन द ब्लड जो वॉटर एंटर हो रहा है द वॉटर इज कमिंग आउट due for the exchange here we have cells na i have told you these are the cells so for the cells it is coming out right and at the venous end then it is entering again right so this is happening with the water so basically at arterial end hydrostatic pressure is more because water is entering more but gradually it loses 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 outside so at venous end venous tak aate aate the hydrostatic pressure reduces so let me tell you the values there the value of the hydrostatic pressure at the arterial end is 38 and the value of hydrostatic pressure at venous end at venous end it's 12 so 38 ka ho jayega wo 12 38 mm to 12 mm everyone give me a thumbs up 
everyone give me a thumbs up you got my point say either yes or no you got it so see the oncotic pressure is same it's 25 it's 25 but hydrostatic pressure differs and there is a reason it is common sense you don't have to learn ki oncotic to same hota hai learn karo hydrostatic change ho jata hai no oncotic matlab protein to jo protein ghus raha hai wo to bahar nahi aa raha na protein is not coming out so protein is same throughout so oncotic pressure is same throughout but water what is entering it is coming out for the exchange so it is decreasing 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 so at arterial end we have more hydrostatic pressure but going towards venous 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 it reduces everyone give me a thumbs up on this point everyone give me a thumbs up yes or no so these are the values learn the four values so osmotic pressure is always 25 25 mm whether it is arterial end of the capillary or venous end of the capillary right but hydrostatic pressure differs so at arterial end it's 38 mm and gradually the water is lost 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 so it reduces 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 at venous end on reaching the venous end reduce ho ho ke it will become 12 okay okay so you got it i guess you got it yes or no now the second rule we have learned hydrostatic pressure is outward and osmotic pressure is inward we have learned this yes or no yes so we have learned two rules we have learned two rules the first rule and the second rule what is the first rule the first rule we have learned is hydrostatic pressure is outward and osmotic pressure is inward. Hydrostatic pressure is pressure due to water and it is always outward. Water push the fluid out, right? Oncotic osmotic pressure is pressure due to protein and it is inward because protein pulls the water. I guess you know the meaning of pushing and you know the meaning of pulling. Pushing yane aage dhakelna. So pushing is outward. Pulling yane apni taraf khinchna. So it is inward. So use these terms also pushing or outward pressure is hydrostatic which is due to water and pulling or inward pressure is oncotic which is due to protein. You will never forget this. Now apply this law. Apply this law on the values. I have told you the four values now. So can you apply the law? Can This is the capillary. This is the arterial end of the capillary. This is the venous end of the capillary. Now you apply the law. So tell me hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure at the arterial end. Can you tell the values just now I taught you? Can you tell me the two values at the venous end, hydrostatic and oncotic? What are the values? So, oncotic pressure is always 25. Hydrostatic pressure at arterial end is 38. At venous end, it's 12. So, you tell me, what is the net pressure kya hai? What is the net pressure at arterial end? So, at arterial end, this one is outward, this one is inward. So, I can see outward is more than inward. And 38 minus 25, 38 minus 25, answer will be 13. So, net pressure is 13 mm which is outward. So, with 13 mm, the fluid will come out. The fluid will come out with how much pressure? The fluid will come out with 13 mm. Pressure, it will come out. It will do the necessary exchange with the cell, whatever cells. It will do the necessary exchange here with the cells. It will do the exchange. And after doing the exchange, see the venous pressures. At the venous end, see the pressure. So, here you can see the two values 12 and 25. So, 25 is more than 12. 25 minus 12 is also 13. 25 minus 12 is also 13. But here, inward is more than outward. Inward is more than. So, here also 13 mm. So, with the same 13 mm, the, it will come in again. So, look at the arrows. You got my point. So, my point is that arterial end pe 13 mm se fluid bahar jata hai, exchange karta hai, aur 13 mm se wapas andar a jata hai. That's why in the end tissue is dry and there is no edema. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Samaj mein aaya kya? So this is the pathophysiology. You can see the same here also. So the four values are written in front of you, I guess. Hydrostatic pressure, osmotic pressure at the arterial end. Hydrostatic, osmotic at the venous end. Now do the calculations here. Do the calculations here. You can do the calculations. So we have learned that osmotic is throughout 25. 25 mm of Hg. But hydrostatic differs. At arterial end, it's 38. At venous end, it's 12. And we have done the exchange here. Here it's 13 mm outward. Here it's 13 mm inward. Give me a thumbs up. So fluid entering at the arterial end with 13 mm it's coming out. Do the exchange here. And with 13 mm it's going in. Everyone give me a thumbs up. Do you have any doubt? So same thing is written in front of you which I have explained you crystal clear. So at arterial end net pressure is outward with 13 mm. At venous end net pressure is inward with 13 mm. So equal and opposite pressure is there. Equal in terms of numbers and opposite it is outward and inward. So in the end there is no edema. In the end there is no edema. You will say me, zara sabi ma'am, ek do mm bhi change hua to kya? 
Just suppose it is 13, it is also 13. You got it, 13 and 13. But imagine instead of 38, if it become 40, because then pani zada hai hamari blood mein. Instead, thoda protein kam hai. Instead of 25, it is 24 or 23. A little bit change is there, so you will say, ma'am, it is an imbalance. So flu more fluid will come out, less will go in. Just suppose the fluid is coming out with 14, 14 mm, and it is going in by 12 mm. So some fluid, 2 mm ka fluid will accumulate here. Small amount, so patient will have edema. No, patient will not have edema because God is great. God has given us a backup also. Ki chota mota kuch change ho na, 2-3 mm ka kuch change ho, thoda bot fluid ya accumulate ho bhi jai, zara sa 2-3 mm ka. So the backups are the lymphatics. God has given a backup. So that extra fluid is taken care by the lymphatic. But if it is too much na, lymphatic cannot take it. A small amount, lymphatic can handle. So at the end, there is no edema. So lymphatics also have a role. Lymphatics are the backup. You got my point. So you will say, ma'am, pressures are same. So lymphatics are not required. But if a little bit pressure change is there, lymphatics are always there. You got my point. So that is the thing. That is the thing. Same diagram is shown here. That is the thing. Now you tell me what can be the causes of edema. We have learned the normal Starling's law. We have learned the pathogenesis. You tell me what can be the causes. So what can be the causes? What is the outward pressure? Now, edema will occur here in the tissue. Edema, what is edema? It is excessive collection of the fluid. Yaan pe fluid collect kab hoga? Hindi mein kaun to yaan pe kab collect hoga fluid? Yaan pe fluid tab collect hoga jab aayega zada aur jayega kam. Mainne kya bula? Jab bahar zada aayega aur andar kam jayega. Thik hai? To jo bachega extra, wo tissue mein accumulate hoga aur usse kahenge edema. Mainne sahi bula kya? If you understand Hindi. Yes. So whenever more fluid comes out, and less fluid goes in right so whenever more fluid is coming out and less is going in that is imbalance between the outward and inward pressure it is not equal and opposite outward is more inward is less don't do the opposite inward more outward less karoge to edema nahi hoga edema will happen when outward is more and inward is less you got my point so what is the outward pressure hydrostatic pressure so due to any reason if hydrostatic pressure increases so in that scenario outward will increase Right. Due to any scenario, if osmotic pressure decreases, so in that scenario, inward will decrease or both of them occurs together. So that results in imbalance and the imbalance will result in edema. Am I right? Ya to outward bad jai, inward same hai. Ya to inward kam ho jai, outward same hai. Ya to dono ho jai. So wo result hoga imbalance mein. Chalo, give me a thumbs up if you got it. You got it. So you got me, you got the two reasons. Out of the five, you got the two reasons. Either increased Hydrostatic pressure, yes. Either decrease oncotic pressure, yes. So these are the two main causes. Ya to outward pressure ko badhao, ya to inward ko kam karo. I will tell you the reasons. Right, first understand the pathogenesis. Number three, number three. Uh, uh, what is the number third cause? Number third, the backup are obstructed. The backup is obstructed. You got my point. The backup is obstructed. The lymphatics are obstructed. I have told you a little bit changes there that, that, it, that is taken care by the lymphatics. The lymphatics are the backup. Imagine due to any reason the lymphatics are not working. They are obstructed. They are destroyed. They are removed. Or they are not working. They are not functional. So in that case also, thoda bo change to hota hai na? in the body. Dynamics. So that can also result in edema. So the third is the backup obstruction, lymphatic obstruction. So out of the five reasons, we have understood three reasons. Say yes or no. The fourth and the fifth, I will tell you when I will tell you the details. Everyone give me a thumbs up, right? So have you got it till now? Do you have any doubt? So we will study the examples now. So can you tell me the few examples of increased hydrostatic pressure? Tell me the first cause. Increased hydrostatic pressure kab over? The outward pressure kab badega? Increase. If hydrostatic pressure is increased but oncotic is same. So outward is more inward. Inward is outward is more inward is same. So that results in imbalance, that results in edema. Can you tell me the causes? Yogita, can you tell me the causes? Shubhangi, Priyanshi, Shake. Anyone can tell me the causes? Two causes of increased hydrostatic pressure. Two causes. Two examples, I mean. So the first example I'm telling you is the cardiac disease. Okay. See, this is a heart. You can see the left side. You can see the right side. You can see the four chambers. You know the blood vessels, all the four chambers connected with. I'm not repeating it. You already know what is heart and what is the connection. What is the cardiac cycle? You know that. Now imagine due to uh, any reason, the right ventricle is not pumping. The patient have right heart failure. Right heart failure, 
the right ventricle is not pumping you will say okay ma'am what will happen then you tell me what will happen if the right ventricle is not pumping it is not doing the systole blood will not go in the lungs for purification blood will not go in the pulmonary artery because it is not pumping it is not doing systole so where the blood will go so due to which the blood will go backward in the backward from right ventricle the blood will go in right auricle yes or no ha bolte jana har point pe from the right auricle the blood will go in svc ivc superior inferior vena cava right and from there the blood will go in the organs so more blood more blood will go in the svc ivc and more blood will go in the organ more blood matlab more water more blood ka matlab kya hota hai blood is made up of water na so more blood more water more hydrostatic pressure so this blood vessel the svc ivc and the veins will have more hydrostatic pressure but same oncotic pressure protein nahi badh raha lekin pani badh gaya pani kyu badh gaya backflow ki wajah se backflow kyu hua kyunki heart pump nahi kar raha you got my point so imbalance will happen and in all the organs the the patient will have edema in all the organs all organs of the body the reason is same in all organs there is more blood more blood means more water more water means more hydrostatic pressure but oncotic pressure is same so hydrostatic pressure is more oncotic is same so all organs have edema so this is the example yes it is anasarka very good usama so give me a thumbs up so that can be the reason so cardiac disease mein ho sakta hai number 1 so cardiac disease mein jo edema hota hai that is due to increased hydrostatic pressure due to the back flow of the blood samajh mein aaya kya dusra imagine a traffic policeman you have to imagine a traffic policeman or any person whose job is standing for more and more and more hours whose job is standing the person is standing for hours and hours and hours standing position ka ka job hai so the job is like standing so you may have seen in such person there is edema of the lag they have lag edema why have you ever thought ki if you ask any traffic policeman now he will he or she will complain ki lag edema the lag edema why what is the reason the reason is the gravity you know newton have discovered gravity now you may be knowing hai na so uh, the gravity is always functional right any time it is working so in the lag there are veins these are the veins of the lag humans have 5 liters of blood we all have 5 liters of blood so due to gravity if the person is standing all the time most of the blood is going in the lags due to the gravity attraction so the blood is accumulated in the lags more blood due to the gravity there will be more blood more blood matlab more water more water matlab more hydrostatic pressure but protein is not increasing oncotic pressure is same so it results in imbalance and the imbalance results in edema such edema is known as postural edema what it is known as postural edema because it is due to the posture of the patient give me a thumbs up now all these details you have to learn right you have to understand don't learn so postural edema it is the transient edema of the feet and the ankle and the legs of the person like traffic constables whose job is standing for for many hours because of which there is more venous blood in the lax due to the gravity give me a thumbs up everyone usama yogita shubhangi samajh mein aaya kya everyone got it say yes or no bolo yes or no you got it say yes or no yes yes usama pulmonary edema can also result so here i have told you the right heart failure usama is asking ma'am what about the left heart failure agar left heart failure kya hoga to kya hoga you yourself tell if left heart failure is there patient have so left ventricle will not pump so blood will not go in the aorta blood will go backward blood will go backward in the left auricle it will go in the pulmonary vein and it will accumulate in the lung more blood more water more hydrostatic pressure it results in pulmonary edema so both ways can work yes so some absolutely right you got my point so the cardiac edema and the postural edema are the edema due to increased hydrostatic pressure so isme do example ho gaye give me a thumbs up give me a thumbs up so write down two examples here can you write the two examples here increase hydrostatic pressure ke heart failure right and left both and number two postural postural edema in dono persons mein edema the cause of the edema is increased hydrostatic pressure now coming on the second cause can you tell me three examples of decrease oncotic pressure teen example batao jisme edema hoga person ko but the reason for edema is decrease protein the reason for the edema is decrease protein or decrease oncotic pressure wo reason hoga can you tell me can you tell me three examples i will tell you three examples so what is the main protein in the blood the main protein in the blood is albumin albumin so uh, total protein in a human i am having 8 g per deciliter protein i guess you are also having the same all normal human being the protein amount is this this much amount of protein we all have in blood but instead of 8 if it becomes 5 or less than 5 
due to any reason if the protein decreases the person will result in edema when the protein decreases oncotic pressure decreases hydrostatic is same but oncotic so outward is same but inward is decreasing hai na a to barabar raha hai lekin ja kam raha hai to bachega jo wo accumulate ho jayega that results in edema so tell me the three reasons can you tell me three reasons okay to understand the three examples you must tell me protein blood mein aata kahan se hai can you see this diagram here in this diagram tell me this is the blood vessel in the blood vessel protein kahan se aata hai can you see this is protein can you tell me osama priyanshi yogita what is the source of the protein what is the source of the protein padmavati what is the source can you tell me anyone source kya hai yes very good priyanshi number 1 diet so we eat the protein in the diet so whatever protein we are eating in the diet that get absorbed that get absorbed and reaches in the blood number 1 number 2 liver also synthesize protein she is absolutely right liver also synthesize some protein so that also comes in the blood so in the blood protein is coming from two sources number 1 git the absorption from the diet from the intestine number 2 liver yes yes yogita absolutely right yes padmavati from where the protein is excreted usually kidney do not excrete the protein no it do not but whenever there is some disease in the kidney the kidney excrete the protein in urine patient can have proteinuria so it can be excreted in case of kidney now i am talking what i am talking i am saying in the blood there is less protein so there can be three possibilities either absorption is less so there will be less absorption is less right from the git or synthesis from the liver is less so it can be less or both are absorption and synthesis is normal but the kidney is abnormal and whatever protein present in the blood it is excreted so excretion of the protein is more so that can be the three organs involved either in the git patient may have malabsorption or in the liver patient may have cirrhosis or in the kidney patient may have nephrotic syndrome nephrotic syndrome so these are the three causes because of which patient have less protein in the blood less protein less oncotic pressure and patient will have edema so all the patients who have malnutrition all the patients who have cirrhosis and all the patients who have nephrotic syndrome they all have edema the reason for their edema is not related to hydrostatic pressure the reason for their edema is decrease oncotic pressure so edema is same but you must tell the reason for the edema you got my point now imagine you are a doctor now of course a patient is coming to your clinic doctor i am having swelling the complaint the only complaint doctor i am having swelling and in layman language it is said as swelling hindi mein kahega to doctor sahab mujhe sujan ho gayi hai kisi bhi part pe ho sakti hai from head to toe any part so give me some medicine right now patient ke liye it is as simple as that but for you you have to rule out what is the cause of the swelling so first rule out whether the causes increase hydrostatic pressure or whether causes decrease oncotic pressure or whether the causes lymphatic obstruction theek hai in increase hydrostatic pressure we have in increase hydrostatic pressure we are having two examples the heart failure right and left and postural edema in decrease oncotic pressure there are three possibilities what are the three possibilities just now i told you the intestinal malabsorption the liver cirrhosis and the kidney nephrotic syndrome sab mein patient ko complaint to yahi hogi bahar se to ye bas swelling dikhegi the patient have swelling that's it but you know the diseases are different the pathogenesis is different so treatment is different right being a doctor what treatment you will offer the first thing you will say i have to do the investigations based on which i will come to know what is the cause of your swelling what is the cause of your edema then i can give you a curative treatment for that if it is available curative means permanent cure right but meanwhile i am giving you a treatment which is known as diuretics diuretics what is the drug diuretics diuretics i teach diuretics in pharmacology so diuretics are the drugs which causes which increases the urination urination urine ka amount badhate hain so whatever extra fluid present in the patient body in the interstitial space whatever fluid causing edema that is excreted in urine and that will give temporary re relief in the edema it is not permanent it is temporary so this diuretic is known as symptomatic treatment it is sim symptomatic treatment you got my point it is not curative treatment if the patient stop diuretic edema will come again because you have not fixed the cause of edema you have to fix the cause you got my point imagine a patient is having fever now fever can be due to covid it can be due to malaria it can be due to typhoid it can be due to dengue there are numerous thousands of causes of fever right but symptomatic treatment for all type of fever is paracetamol 
right? So if you give the paracetamol, the fever will subside till that medicine works. But if the patient stop paracetamol, again, fever will come if you don't fix the cause of the fever. So you have to, so symptomatic treatment and curative treatment are different. So if you give diuretics, it is a symptomatic treatment, but you have to find what is the actual cause. If the actual cause is heart failure, you have to give hynotropic drug that will fix it. If actual cause is postural, you have to ask the patient to change the posture. Don't stand for long hours. Right. If the cause is malnutrition, you have to give the drugs for the intestine that does absorption well. So likewise, you have to give a uh, different treatment to the same edema. Patient ke liye to edema hi hai. Patient ke liye. Now that makes a difference between a doctor, a graduated MBBS degree certified doctor and a quack. You know, quacks practice ki jo bhi hai, swelling hai, haan, hai, diuretic le lo. Wo pata hi nahi karenge, wo sabko diuretic de dehenge. Or patient ko ho bhi jayega. But diuretics cannot be taken for the whole life. No, it's a symptomatic treatment. So this is how we step by step approach the patient of the edema. Give me a thumbs up if you got my point. So this is how. So till now, out of the five causes of edema, I have explained you examples of two. What I have explained you, I have explained you the reasons for increased hydrostatic pressure. You know the two examples. I have told you the reasons for decreased oncotic pressure. I have told you three examples. Now I am going to give you examples of lymphatic obstruction. Now imagine a patient is coming in my clinic. Patient is saying, doctor, I am having edema. I am having edema, right? So if I have seen in this patient, hydrostatic pressure is normal. In this pressure, the oncotic pressure is normal. Still patient have edema. Is it possible? Yes, it is possible. So both the pressures are normal, the outward and the inward. Still patient have edema. So hydrostatic pressure, it is normal. Oncotic pressure, it is normal. Still patient have edema, so causes lymphatic obstruction. The backups are obstructed. So what are the causes of lymphatic obstruction? The edema due to lymphatic obstruction is known as lymphodema it, because it is due to lymphatic obstruction. You know, as I have told you, the God has given us the lymphatics. You can see the lymphatics are the backup, right? So whatever thoda bahut fluid to yahan bachi jata hai. So whatever comes out, the same goes in. But thoda bahut to phir bhi bach jata hai. Thoda bahut. Jo thoda bahut bachta hai, that is taken care by the lymphatic. Lymphatic take that and give it into the blood bag via thoracic duct. Give me a thumbs up, everyone. Give me a thumbs up, right? So you got it. So lymphatic obstruct kab hote hain? Yogita, Priyanshi, Osama, kab hote hain? Anyone else who is watching me live? Lymphatic obstruct hone ke teen causes batao. Lymphatic non-functionality ke teen causes batao. Teen examples. So the first example is breast cancer. You know, imagine you are a breast surgeon. You are a breast surgeon. The lady is coming to you. I am having a lump in my breast. Either right, left, whatever. I am having a lump in my breast. So only treatment of breast cancer is the surgery. I know if it is not metastatic, if it is not stage 4, you will offer stage 1, 2, 3, you will offer the surgery. So you will ask the lady that we will operate your lump, we will take the lump out of your body. We will take the lump out of your body, we will cut it, we will take it out. But you know the cancer spread by a, by a lymphatics. Many cancers spread by a lymphatics. So breast cancer is one of them. So whatever cancer cells present here now inside the lump that is transmitting to the axillary lymph node of this lady. Can you see this is the axillary lymphatic. So cancer is transmitting and after that it will it will become metastatic and it will come throughout the body. In the blood vessel once it is coming now, it will come in the blood via lymphatic and it will spread in all organs, it will be stage 4. We do not want our patient to be stage 4. Of course, we do not want it, we want to save our patient. Right, we do not want metastatic cancer in this lady. So we will ask the lady, we will do two surgeries. Number one, we will remove the lump. We will remove the lump that is the cancer present in your breast, whatever quadrant it is present. Number two, we will remove your axillary lymph nodes of the corresponding limb. If it is right, the right limb, the right axilla. If it is left, the left axilla. So the lady will ask why you are doing the surgery here. I don't have any lump here. So you have to explain you don't have any lump. But maybe the micro particles, the cancer cells have already invaded your lymphatic and we do not want to take a chance. If we remove only the lump and we do not remove the lymphatics now, it may happen that in future, some of the cancer cells are hidden inside this lymphatic and in future you will have stage 4 cancer. So we have to do two operations in one sitting. In one operation, in one sitting only, we will do both the surgeries. So we will give an incision here, take your lump out. We will give an incision here, take your lymphatics out. So you have to consult like this. It is by default we do so. So lady will say, okay. But the lymphatics is not a vestigial organ. Why the God has given this axillary lymph nodes? To all of us, we are having axillary. In our axilla, we all have lymph nodes. It is not a vestigial organ. Yes or no? It is not appendix. So why the God has given? The lymphatics are to take on care of the edema. They are the backup. So if you are removing the lymphatic after the surgery, this is the scenario. After the surgery. So you can say the lady will have edema in that arm. 
because you have removed the lymphatic from the axilla you have already removed but it is the side effect of the surgery you can say right it is the morbidity of the surgery तो आगे कुआ पीछे खाई अगर तुम नहीं ऑपरेट करोगे तो पेशेंट को फ्यूचर में टाइप फोर मेटास्टेटिक कैंसर होने के चांसेस हैं और ऑपरेट कर दोगे तो पेशेंट को लिम्पोडीमा होने के चांसेस हैं सो लिम्पोडीमा इज अ बेटर थिंग एटलीस्ट पेशेंट विल बी सर्वाइविंग वी विल मैनेज दीमा इन फ्यूचर ठीक है इसको मैनेज करेंगे कुछ ना कुछ करेंगे वी विल गिव द डायरेटिक्स और करेंगे उसको मैनेज राइट सम फिजियोथेरेपी बट इफ दिस्टेज फोर इज देर लेडी विल डाई right so we will select that option which is more suitable ha na so that is the lymphedema lymphedema after the breast cancer give me a thumbs up everyone if you got it what i mean so removal of the axillary lymph nodes we have removed the axillary lymph nodes in a patient with breast carcinoma so after the surgery the patient will have lymphedema of the affected arm or if you are a surgeon na if you are going to be a surgeon and operating this lady this type of lady you have to counsel before the surgery ki hum ye jo surgery karenge lymphatics nikalenge so in future you may have lymphedema so don't blame us for that and if we don't do na if we don't remove it you say no how i will live with lymphedema throughout my life so you have chances of having stage 4 cancer so choice is yours what do you want of course you don't want to die you want to live you want to survive but survive Driving with edema, we will manage it. We will manage it. So you have to, you know, make it pre mentally prepared before the surgery only that this is going to happen in future. So this is the thing, and you will manage it. It is not the thing in all ladies will happen. Depending, you are taking complete axillary lymph nodes or partial axillary lymph nodes. So give me a thumbs up if you got it. So that is the first example of lymphedema. Shall I proceed? Jahangir, uh, Swanand, Yogita, Padmavati, समझ में आया? आगे बढ़े. Number two, have you heard about uh, uh, disease filariasis? Which is caused by a parasite known as Wucheria bancrofta. Wucheria bancrofta is a nematode. It is a parasite hota hai that I teach in parasitology. What, do, what does that do? The Wucheria bancrofta loves lymphatic. It is a lymphatic. So, the Wucheria bancrofta is a larva hota hai that is going in the lymphatic and obstructing the lymphatic. Can you see this is the larva? The larva of the Wucheria bancrofta are obstructing the lymphatics. So, lymphatics got obstructed. It got obstructed. They become non-functional. So, ये obstruct हो गए. They become non-functional. So, patient will have edema, usually in the legs, usually in the legs. And this disease is known as elephantitis. यानी हिंदी में कहते हैं इसे हाथी पाँव. Elephantitis is हाथी पैर, हाथी पाँव. है ना? So, because the foot is looking like an elephant, right? Elephantitis. So, basically, the patient have edema in the foot and the genitals. In the foot and the genital, patient have edema. So that can happen. The elephantitis can happen. Filariasis, Wucheria bancrofta, and nematode. They cause obstruction. So patient have scrotal edema and the lax edema. Elephantitis is the name of the disease. That can happen. The second thing. The third thing, congenitally, hereditary. God ne lymphatic si nahi di. God has not given the functional lymphatics. It is hereditary. So the child will have edema throughout the body. The child have edema throughout the body because the lymphatics are not functional and the disease is known as Milroy disease. Milroy disease. So can you tell me the three examples now? Can anyone of you help me with the three examples? So tell me the causes of edema. So first I taught you that is increase hydrostatic pressure, decrease oncotic pressure and now I am teaching you lymphatic obstruction. You got my point. You have to tell me the examples. The two examples here, three examples here, three examples here. Examples are important. All these have edema. But what is the cause of edema? Right. So lymphatic obstruction may we have learned three. Number one, breast cancer. Breast cancer. Yes. Tell me the second. The second is the filariasis known as elephantitis, Wucheria bancroft type. The third is the Milroy disease. Very good, Osama. It's Milroy disease. Give me a thumbs up. And others we have already seen, we will revise in the end. So coming on the fourth cause. Coming on the fourth cause. The fourth cause of the edema. The fourth cause of the edema is sodium water retention. What do you mean by sodium water retention? Now we will see two things. The heart failure and the renal failure. Um, what do you mean by renal failure? What is the function of the kidney? Why God has given us kidney? Kidneys are given to excrete sodium and water out of the body in the form of the urine. If kidney become failed, renal failure is there. Kidney is non-functional, so kidney will not excrete sodium and water in the urine. Patient have oliguria, patient have anuria, oliguria hoga, urine nahi aara. So the so patient will have sodium water retention. Now in this patient who is having renal failure, the hydrostatic pressure is normal, the oncotic pressure is normal, the lymphatics are normal, still patient have edema. The patient have edema due to sodium and water retention. Basically the kidney is not excreting the urine. The kidney is failed. 
both the kidneys bilateral failure is there due to any reason the bilateral failure is there so urine is not coming out patient is having oliguria or anuria so sodium and water is retained in the body that will gradually increase the hydrostatic pressure more water more hydrostatic pressure that results in edema so that can be the cause sodium water retention give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up yes yogi absolutely right you are writing the correct causes so here i am teaching you the next cause sodium water retention the first is renal failure because of renal failure there is sodium water retention that results in edema that results in edema right although pressures are normal but patient have edema right number 2 if the patient is having left heart failure imagine the patient having left heart failure kahan gaya left heart left heart the left heart failure is there the left heart is not pumping the patient have left heart failure what will happen the blood will not go ahead the blood will not go ahead in the aorta so all the organs will receive no blood but most sensitive organ among them is kidney whenever kidney do not receive blood enough blood inside the kidney there is the apparatus there are cells known as jj apparatus jj cell juxtra glomerular cells they will get stimulated oh my god blood nahi aa raha as soon as they got stimulated they secrete renin in the blood and the renin angiotensin pathway will get activated because of which again aldosterone will come in the blood and that will cause sodium and water retention sodium and water retention kidney ko lagega hindi mein kehti hu kidney ko lagega ki mujhe blood nahi mil raha mujhe blood nahi mil raha to shayad body mein pani kam hai isliye mujhe blood nahi mil raha to pani bachane ke liye wo secrete karegi renin renin banayega aldosterone aur wo sodium water retention karenge taki mujhe zyada blood mile lekin kidney bechari ko ye nahi pata ki pani nahi hai isliye blood nahi mil raha left heart pump nahi kar raha isliye blood nahi mil raha you got my point what i mean so that can result you got my point so there are two possibilities either the heart failure or the renal failure both results so heart failure and renal failure both results in sodium and water retention so more sodium more water more blood volume and that results in edema so the next cause of edema is sodium water retention which can be due to heart failure and renal failure everyone give me a thumbs up everyone everyone you got my point the last reason the last reason then i will revise the last reason imagine a patient till now what causes i have taught you either the patient have increased hydrostatic pressure or the patient have decreased oncotic pressure or the patient have lymphatic obstruction or the patient have sodium and water retention in sab mein se kuch bhi ho to patient will have edema we have seen various examples in each category now imagine a patient is there having edema i have seen hydrostatic pressure oh it's normal i will see okay see oncotic pressure oh it's also normal lymphatic obstruction it's also normal sodium water retention no it's also normal still patient have edema aisa ho sakta hai yes as a whole sakta hai you will say man then what is the cause of edema you are saying hydrostatic pressure oncotic pressure lymphatic sodium water retention everything is normal everything still patient have edema so what is the fifth cause of edema what is it can happen it can happen the fifth cause of the edema is listen i'm drawing a blood vessel for you to explain the fifth cause so this is a blood vessel inside the blood vessel this is the endothelial cell blood vessels are lined by endothelial cells and inside the blood the fluid is present so this is the fluid present inside the blood so the and now i am saying hydrostatic pressure normal oncotic pressure normal everything is normal so fluid will not come out you will say i'm okay we understand that now but imagine due to any reason there are gaps the, there are gaps in the endothelial lining gaps you know i mean gaps if the gaps are formed due to any reason normally the lining is continuous normally the lining is continuous so fluid do not come out but if the gaps are there imagine the gaps can you see the gaps i have drawn the gaps for you these all are gaps in the blood vessel this is known as gaps in the wall of the blood vessel if they are formed so even the hydrostatic and oncotic pressure are normal hydrostatic pressure is normal hai yahan pe bhi oncotic pressure normal hai yahan pe bhi hydrostatic and oncotic pressure is normal but from these gaps the fluid will come out the fluid will come out from these gaps you got my point the fluid will come out even on being the pressures normal so th this will result in edema so what is the cause of the edema the cause of the edema you will say when the cause of the edema here is the gap so gap ko thoda achhi language mein bolo pathology mein kya kehte hain creating gaps is increase capillary permeability is capillary ki permeability bad gayi aisa bolo don't say ma'am gaps ban gaye ha samajhne ke liye gaps ban gaye you are understood but say ma'am increase capillary permeability that means gaps increase capillary ki permeability bad gayi matlab usme gap ban gaye samajhne ki baat hai so don't say ki ma'am gaps are formed say ma'am increase capillary permeability which results in edema even on being pressures normal you got my point even on being pressures normal this can happen 
everyone give me a thumbs up yes or no okay one more important point here if you got it um if the gaps are formed now so of course the fluid will come out of course the fluid will come out even on pressure normal but along with the fluid protein will also come out gap hai to bahti ganga mein haath do lo fluid ja raha hai saath saath mein protein bhi chala jayega so in the fluid abundant amount of protein is present the edema here is a special edema that is known as transudate that i'm sorry that is known as exudate exudate type of edema having abundant protein also right so the last reason is increased capillary permeability right so i have shown the same thing here you can see please appreciate the lining in the first diagram it's continuous see the endothelial cells i'm drawing they are continuous if you can see zoom it out see see the second diagram i'm drawing see the second diagram see this is first cell this is second cell this is third cell appreciate the gaps if you can appreciate the gaps it's good if you can appreciate the gaps between it's good so it is increased capillary permeability from this gap the two things are coming out number one fluid and number two the dot 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 protein can you see the protein so can you see the background blue color the background blue color is the fluid with the protein that is exudate type of edema everyone give me a thumbs up everyone so can you so here generalized edema can also happen localized can also happen due to increase if the complete body capillary have gaps complete body so the complete body edema is there generalized edema is there which is known as anasarca anasarca is complete body edema or it can be localized have you ever thought do you have a mosquito bite yes i have many right so in um, you know rainy season especially we have mosquitoes right so whenever we have mosquito bite we have such elevation the point at which the mosquito bite have you ever thought this is edema na <laughs> what is the elevation elevation is edema have you ever thought ki mosquito bite ke baad edema kyu hota hai मस्कीटो बाइट के बाद एडीमा होता है ना इतनी सिंपल चीज है हम सबको होता है आए दिन होता है लेकिन कभी सोचा आज तक कभी सोचा कि मस्कीटो बाइट है तो एडीमा क्यों होता है चलो समझते हैं पूछते हैं किसी से या पढ़ते हैं राइट सो व्हाई द एडीमा हैपेंस आफ्टर एनी इंसेक्ट बाइट मस्कीटो बाइट द रीजन इज इंक्रीज कैपिलरी परमिबिलिटी सो व्हेन एवर एनी मस्कीटो और एनी इंसेक्ट बाइट यू द प्रोसेस ऑफ इन्फ्लेमेशन टेक्स प्लेस एंड इन इन्फ्लेमेशन द गैप्स आर फॉर्म द इंक्रीज कैपिलरी परमिबिलिटी दैट रिजल्ट्स इन एडीमा so that can happen give me a thumbs up everyone give me a thumbs up so we have understood the five causes let me revise let me revise the master table the five causes of edema who will help me who will help me the five causes of edema the first cause is increase hydrostatic pressure the second cause i want everyone to participate to to maza hai usama swanand yogita anilipsa पद्मावती mujhe sab log help karo please yogita everyone maine kisi ka naam miss kiya to please everyone help me with example the second cause is the decrease oncotic pressure the third is the lymphatic obstruction the fourth is the sodium and water retention and the fifth and the last is increased capillary permeability jiska matlab hota hai gaps formation now you tell me two causes here you tell me three causes here again you tell me three causes here again you tell me two causes here and you tell me one or two cause here that's it who will tell me anyone interested okay chalo padmavati have started okay priyanshi good so increase hydrostatic pressure may it's heart failure heart failure and postural postural edema postural due to the posture you all are right decrease oncotic pressure may the three causes protein ke teeno cause kya hai right so number 1 intestinal malabsorption number 2 liver cirrhosis and number 3 kidney mein nephrotic syndrome right yaad aaya wo diagram ya to absorb kam ho raha hai ya synthesis kam ho raha hai ya excrete zyada ho raha hai bahut simple hai lymphatic mein the three causes one is breast cancer breast cancer ki surgery breast cancer ki wajah se edema nahi hota bhai uski surgery ki wajah se hota hai you got my point the second is filariasis filariasis bucheria bancroft hai <coughs> and the third is congenital hereditary milroidism right you all are right absolutely you all are such a fantastic students na ki ek bar samjhao samajh mein aa jata hai i love it i love it jab tum log aisa reply karte ho sahi sahi mujhe bahut acha lagta hai that you got my point right i feel very happy thank you thank you so sodium water retention with the two main organ heart failure renal failure heart failure and renal failure and increased capillary um, may mosquito bite or you can say insect bite insect bite or any type of inflammation generalized any type of inflammation so these are the causes now see everyone is right main do question batati hu usme do highlight heart kahan kahan pe aa raha hai heart failure heart failure coming at two places here and here so whenever heart failure is occurring edema occurs due to two causes number one due to increased hydrostatic pressure number two due to sodium water retention heart failure renal failure kahan kahan pe aa raha hai my second question renal failure bhi do jagah aa raha hai yahan pe 
और यहाँ पे नेफ्रोटिक सिंड्रोम है रीनल फेलियर है तो वैन एवर पेशेंट है रीनल फेलियर अगेन रीडियम आकर ड्यू टू टू कॉजेस सोडियम वाटर रिटेंशन एंड डिक्रीज ऑनकोटिक प्रेशर यू गॉट माई पॉइंट ये सब एमसीक्यूज बता रही हूँ मैं लाइन से तो इन द एग्जाम यू विल गेट कंफ्यूज हो मै गॉड हार्ट फेलियर के क्या दो कॉजेस है रटने की जरूरत नहीं है समझ लो रीनल फेलियर के क्या दो कॉजेस है तो हार्ट फेलियर हैव टू कॉजेस रीनल फेलियर हैव टू कॉजेस बट लीवर फेलियर Liver failure have only one cause. Liver failure that is decrease on body pressure. So this is how you have to learn it. This is how. This is the approach. You got my point. So that makes the pathogenesis of edema. Does anyone have any doubt till now? Does anyone have any doubt till now? So the next and the last thing is the types of the edema. There are two types of edema: transudate, exudate. What do you mean by that? Transudate, exudate. So whenever transudate and exudate. Whenever edema have only fluid, no protein, no cell, it is transudate. But whenever along with fluid, it contains abundant protein and abundant cell. So protein rich, cell rich edema is exudate. But protein poor, cell poor edema is transudate. So what is the definition? Transudate is protein poor, cell poor. Only fluid is there. Exudate is protein rich, cell rich along with fluid. So here protein and cell are absent. Here protein and cell are abundant. So that is transudate, exudate. Right? You got my point. So I told you the five causes, the five causes of edema. Right? So okay, you can see this is a normal blood capillary. This is a normal blood capillary. You can see there are no gaps. Everyone see. Understand transudate, exudate. So first four causes. पांचवा छोड़ दो gaps वाला. जो first four causes हैं. First four causes क्या क्या थे? Either see यहाँ पे hydrostatic and oncotic are same. See the arrows. But if either hydrostatic increases or oncotic decreases or lymphatic obstruction or sodium water retention, so only fluid comes out. Only fluid comes out and that results in transudate. But the fifth cause, what is the fifth cause? If gaps are formed, so gaps ban gaye, so fluid ke saath protein bhi aayega. See this edema, see this edema. Is wale mein se fluid hai. Is mein fluid ke saath protein bhi leak hua. So this edema is exudate. You got my point? I told you five causes of edema. Increase hydrostatic pressure, decrease oncotic pressure, lymphatic obstruction, sodium and water retention, and the last one is important: increase capillary permeability, which means that there are gaps. So in the first four, only fluid will come out. Only fluid will come out, and that results in transudate. But in the last one, since gaps have been formed, so fluid with it. प्रोटीन भी निकल के आ जाएगा और सेल भी निकल के आ जाएंगे सो दिस इडिमा इज नोन एज एक्सुडेट सो एक्सुडेट इडिमा का दूसरा नाम है इन्फ्लेमेटरी इडिमा एवरीवन गिव मी अ थम्स अप आई एम क्रिस्टल क्लियर इन माय कांसेप्ट्स आर यू गिव मी अ थम्स अप गिव मी अ थम्स अप सो दैट्स ऑल अबाउट द इडिमा डू यू हैव एनी डाउट इन द पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ इडिमा इफ यू हैव प्लीज यू आर फ्री टू आस्क मी इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट यू आर फ्री टू आस्क मी राइट सो दैट इज द पैथोफिजियोलॉजी ऑफ इडिमा स्टिल इफ यू हैव एनी डाउट and you realize it later on so you can uh, tell your doubt to me on this contact number you can see the contact number just a second why i can't write with the pen okay i am unable to write oh i've just closed it i'm sorry anyways if you have any doubt you can ask me on my contact number or uh, you can send a whatsapp or telegram message to me so thank you for being with me i really enjoy teaching you hopefully same from your side and just a second uh every day i will be live at 9 am in the morning so you have to stay connected i have sent you the schedule also on the groups i can see uh can you see it just a second yes i guess you can see it so my contact number is in front of you it's 9833032 948 on this contact number you can ask your doubts and uh, in the comment section there is a link given if you click on the link you can connect me on other social platforms that is on instagram on uh, there is a whatsapp group link on the telegram so you can connect me on various platform i will share you the educational content the one minute learning videos and many conceptual learning there on the social media so please uh, connect me on other platforms also thank you very much for being with me and if you like the lecture don't forget to click on the like button share the link with your friends colleagues everyone with all the medicos you know throughout the group and subscribe our youtube channel press the bell icon for getting the notifications thank you see you bye bye study hard all the best give me a minute so i'm ending it right
and uh, if you have any other topics which you want me to take in the youtube classes kindly uh, you can text me on the whatsapp or telegram i will schedule it in upcoming weeks so many students have told me to teach the autocoids and anti-psychiatry drugs antidepressant drugs and anti-arrhythmic drugs many topics you have suggested so they all are in pipeline in future every week i'm going to take their high demand topics anti-malarial drugs you have told me so whatever topics you are going to tell me i'm planning on youtube free sessions and every day at 9 a.m in the morning we will be live thank you very much bye bye study hard all the best and i'm ending the session